Hello and welcome to Solid Ground Church. My name is Mike Collins. I'm the lead pastor here and I'm glad that you've taken a couple moments out of your week to worship with us. And if you are new around here, please take a moment to fill out our online connect card. If you're watching on YouTube, please click like and subscribe, the little church bell so you know when our, our next worship service comes out. And if you haven't already heard it yet, I uh, just want to wish all the dads out there happy Father's Day. We're going to have some fun today, maybe even tell a few dad jokes, but uh, we'll get to all that here in just a couple moments. Let's prepare our hearts to worship wherever you are. Let's just take a deep breath in, breathe all the stuff out that's happened uh, during the week, and uh, ask God to touch us in a fresh way. So if you would please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you just as we are today, and we ask that you would fill us up uh, with your love, uh, with encouragement, with hope. And as we sing uh, together, as we worship you, God, uh, we ask that you will go to every hurt, to every area that's broken or needs healing, and that we will experience uh, you putting us back together and healing us. In Jesus' mighty and powerful name we pray, amen. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is a mountain, you see a mountain move. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me.
hello again. Uh, Marie will be back with us here in just a moment. A couple things I need to let you know before we continue our worship service. And first, if, if you're a regular around here, you probably know what's coming. Your one-stop shop for all things solid ground is sgbic.com. There you can find all of our past worship gatherings, our potluck episodes, information about SG Kids, which we're having a blast in person. But we also put an online program up for you every single week and also Solid Ground Youth that is meeting once a month right now. We have a pool party coming up. All the information is at sgbic.com, but on the first Wednesday of July, we are going to have a youth pool party and we're really excited. Food, swimming, fun, sun, California sunshine. It's amazing. And if you're close in the area, we would love to see any teenagers that you know uh, uh, there. It'll be awesome. And also, speaking of awesome, if you do live near Rancho Cucamonga, we are having Juan's Tacos after our service on Sunday, June 27th. I have it memorized. That's how excited I am about it. It's uh, $7 a person, and uh, you can contact us at the office if you need tickets or, or buy them in person. Uh, but we would love to see you. There's some of you that have been online and uh, haven't been out quite yet, and uh, it's going to be outside. If you feel comfortable coming to eat tacos with us, we would love to see you there and see your face there. So, uh, with that being said, we've come to the part of our worship service where we receive the offering as an uh, act of worship. It's a response. If you're new around here, please feel no pressure to give. And the quickest and easiest way to give is online at uh, sgbic.com, or you can uh, send a, a check to the office, or if you live near, you can drop it by uh, if, if you're in the area. But um, uh, no matter what uh, we're, we're giving today, our time, our talents, our, our attention to God, let's take a moment to just thank God for the faithfulness God has shown all of us uh, up to this point in our lives. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we take uh, inventory of our lives and our relationships and uh, all the things that we have to be thankful for, uh, your Son, Jesus Christ, and his sacrifice, we respond to that in this moment and thank you uh, for the breath in our lungs for the clothes on our backs and uh, and we we are filled with gratitude this morning so in jesus name we pray amen can't go back to the beginning All I want 
Thank you, worship team. I always appreciate an opportunity to just soak in the presence of the Lord. So thank you for leading us into that time. My name is Ryan and I'm one of the pastors here and it's my privilege to share with you today. And today I wanna to say happy Father's Day. And you know, the other day, my wife and I, we were in the elevator in our building and I just looked at her and I said, Jen, do you know why elevator jokes are always classic jokes? And she just looked at me and said, no, why? I said, it's because they work on so many levels. Did them. Sorry, I just had to start with a good dad joke. But in all seriousness, I believe that we live in a culture that really struggles to honor men and fathers. I'm all for calling out toxicity and calling people to higher standards. However, I also believe that at times we have put so much focus on calling out the darkness that we have forgot to celebrate what is good. I believe that what you focus on is what you see, and even more importantly, what we celebrate is what we replicate. We wanna replicate a generation of men and of fathers who know how to honor God and love their families well. And so this morning, I just simply wanna to say to the fathers and to the men in the room and who are watching us live here today, we see you, we thank you, and we celebrate you today. Let me say a quick prayer for the men in the room as we begin. Lord God, we thank you so much for who you are. And we thank you for the way in which you created each of us uniquely to reflect your character. And I thank you for the way in which men reflect your heart. And God, I pray that you would continue to draw each of us more and more into your presence and that we would honor you and reflect you in this world because our world needs each of us being purely who we have created, you have created us to be and to reflect your heart well. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You know, this morning, I remember a story of a little boy who grew up in a very difficult circumstances. They grew up in a rough part of town and he grew up with a single mom working really hard to provide for the family, but that that meant that they lived in a rough part of town where life was really hard. And this family really, really struggled. But this particular little boy loved comic books. One of his favorites was Superman. Years later, he would recall this actual event. He said, one of the saddest days of my life was when my mom told me that Superman did not exist. And I was like, what do you mean Superman's not real? And she thought I was crying because it's like Santa Claus isn't real. But I wasn't crying because of that. I was crying because there was no one with enough power to save us. Just like that little boy, we all need heroes. You see, heroes help to inspire us to something great. They give us hope and they challenge us to be the best versions of ourselves. And in some cases, they, we, we hope they rescue us from the desperate situations that we're in. Who were some of your childhood superheroes? Was it Spider-Man? Maybe it was Batman who fought for justice. Maybe it was Wonder Woman. I liked Underdog. Underdog is here to save the day. 
I always liked him because he represented fighting for the little guy. Maybe you liked Superman or Flash Gordon, or maybe you liked a real person like John Glenn. But whoever it was, what were the qualities that these heroes had? Maybe it was that they, they took action. Maybe it's that heroes are people of integrity. Heroes are selfless people who serve the needs of others. Heroes fight for justice. And heroes don't do it for fame. In fact, they often have hidden identities and they often walk among us until they go put on their mask and their cape. The truth is that many of us have often been hurt when someone that we looked up to or a hero let us down. When we realize that they have flaws and they are humans just like us. But the answer is not to simply point out every example of a flawed person. You see, we already know the reality of our broken world. All we need to do is turn on the news and we see examples of people fighting for power or exploiting and hurting others. Even church leaders often let us down. What we need is more healthy examples to follow. People that encourage us, that, that inspire us, that show us a different way. I mean, even as an adult, I still need heroes that point me into a new way of living, that inspire me, that call me to, to do something so much more. Maybe you're there this morning. Maybe you too. Maybe you need something that, that draws you into something more. Maybe you need someone to rescue you, to step into your situation, to advocate for you, to fight for justice, to encourage you to, to have hope again. This morning, we're going to continue our series on the book of Nehemiah. But instead of going chapter by chapter, this morning, we're going to take a step back. And I invite us to do a, a character study where we look into the individual person of Nehemiah. You see, as I studied Nehemiah, I found three traits of a hero that I want us to see today. So let's begin by going back to the very beginning, the introduction to Nehemiah. And in chapter 1, verse 3 to 6, we see some of his character and some of his heart. Nehemiah has just heard the news about his own people, the Israelites, and how they survived the exile. And it says this, They said to me, Those who survived the exile and are back in the province of Jerusalem are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned by fire. When I heard these things, I sat down and I wept. For days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. And then I said to the Lord, Lord, the God of heaven and the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayers your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel. Now there's three things that we see in this text, three traits of a hero. And I wanna, I wanna dig into them this morning. And the first is this, heroes like Nehemiah model servant leadership. You see, the Bible hardly speaks of leadership as a spiritual gift, especially in the book of Nehemiah. Now, it's not that the Bible is opposed to leadership in any way, but that instead, in terms of, it speaks almost exclusively in terms of servants of God rather than leaders of the people. This is how Nehemiah refers to himself over and over again. He refers to himself as a servant of God. And he, and he speaks of Moses the same way. You see, Nehemiah was actually a man of, of high position, of influence. He was a cupbearer for the king. And yet his chosen identity, his chosen title is servant of God. Nehemiah had what I would call bold humility. You see, he was a bold leader who did big and bold things, but he always did it in a way in which he showed humility and love for others by putting their needs first and, and by pressing in and, and, and putting his needs second. He was this servant leader who, who really strived for others. 
Now, as we look at each one of these traits this morning, these hero traits, I want us to see a verse from Scripture, and, and I'll give us another example to see that, that, that Scripture is just saturated with these verses and with these examples. So Scripture repeats this message of servant leadership, and it calls each of us to this. And it clearly does so in Philippians 2, starting in verse 30. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each one of you in the interest of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset of Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. Being made in human likeness and being found in the appearance of man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Now, there are so many examples of this all throughout Scripture, but another one of those is the example of the servant leadership in Queen Esther. Now, as I began to study this, I found that Queen Esther was a contemporary of Nehemiah. And although her book of the Bible immediately follows Nehemiah, she actually lived 30 years before him. You see, Esther's example of using her position and risking speaking up to the king on behalf of the Israelites was no doubt what helped to model servant leadership for Nehemiah when he had to boldly go before the king and risk sharing the vision that God had laid on his heart. You see, she paved the way. And servant leaders always are looking not to their own interest, but they're, they're leading in such a way that they're looking out for the interest of others. The moral of the story is, servant leaders lead by championing others. And you never know who is watching and who you might be paving the way for. The second thing I want us to see this morning is that heroes like Nehemiah are people of integrity. Integrity is who you are when no one is watching. Who am I when all of the lights are out and when no one is looking? That's what integrity is all about. We see this in Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 4. It says this, When I heard these things, I sat down and I wept. For some days I mourned and I fasted and I prayed before the God of heaven. You see, it all starts with prayer. Nehemiah knew the importance and the power of prayer. He was saturated in prayer. He spent so much time just, just sitting in the presence of the Lord that when he heard this, he was grieved and he spent time there. He knew that if the vision were going to become true, if he were going to be successful in life, that he needed to be covered in constant prayer. And in the midst of this, Nehemiah was patient. He prayed for some days, for days on end. He fasted and he prayed. This was not some little short prayer that we say before we eat, like God's neat, let's eat. No, this, this, was, this was a patient and persistent prayer. Scholars believe it was six months between when Nehemiah received this first vision, when his heart was broken, before that and when he took his first action. This was a lot of patience, and this was consistent prayer, both between planning and, and, and taking action and, and, and praying and, and all of that in preparation behind the scenes before the vision would ever begin to take its first roots, its first steps. How quickly do I just give up when I don't get the answer that I'm looking for? How quickly do I get discouraged and say, God didn't answer my prayer? Oh, well, I just need to do it in my own strength. No, Nehemiah kept praying and he worked while he patiently waited on the Lord. Philippians 4, 6 to 7 says this, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. You see, integrity means that every leader needs to lead themselves first. That's where we start. We dig in and we, and we, we begin to lead ourselves in patient persistence. You see, people don't follow what you say. They follow what you do. That means that heroes spend time on their knees. Two heroes that modeled this in Scripture are Joshua and Caleb. 
And their story can be found in Numbers chapter 13, and I'm not gonna go into all of it, but there were 12 uh, spies that were sent out to spy out Canaan. But these two, Joshua and Caleb, they were leaders of integrity. And they didn't trust what they saw with their eyes, but rather they trusted the eyes of faith instead of following the crowd. The other 10 all gave negative reports, but Joshua and Caleb believed what God had promised. Their integrity caused them to be great leaders. And the Bible commends them by saying that they followed the Lord wholeheartedly. That's what integrity means. It's this wholehearted obedience that Nehemiah exemplified over and over again. He wasn't half-hearted. He didn't do things halfway and just go, well, that's good enough. No, he pressed in and he prayed and he honored God in the trenches long before the work even began. The moral of the story for us is this. The Christians, we are called to be people of integrity and deep spirituality even when no one is looking. The third example that I want us to see this morning is this. The heroes like Nehemiah do hard things. Leaders don't give up and, and let fate just run its course. No, no, they, they, they believe that God wants to do something more. I can't, I mean, can you imagine how hard this project really was? Every aspect of this was full of great peril. Even simply talking to the king could have cost Nehemiah his life. I'm sure he did it with fear and trembling, but he trusted God. This project was just simply too big to be done on his own. There was no way that he humanly could fulfill this vision that God had given Nehemiah in his own strength. Nehemiah knew that he needed God. I mean, think about this. To rebuild the walls in and of itself is an architectural feat. And to do that with a group of people who are unqualified is not only crazy, it's potentially dangerous. I don't know if you've ever seen a wall collapse. I have, and it's scary. I mean, you've got to run. But Nehemiah used everyone, even unskilled people. They were all a part of this. But Nehemiah trusted God. And and the project didn't just simply end there. Nehemiah not only rebuilt the wall, he reformed the people and renewed their covenant with God. And it's it's one thing to to lead yourself. It's another to to lead your family to God. It's a whole other thing entirely to lead a nation back to God. But that is exactly what Nehemiah did. He prayed, he fasted, and and he called the people to repentance and to confession, and he led them back to the heart of the Father. These feats alone are amazing, but Nehemiah did all of this while facing opposition. There was opposition from within and and people began to murmur and and they didn't always like doing the work. And sometimes it came from outside. Other rulers in the region like Sambalot and his gang often tried to undermine him over and over again. They even sent open letters trying to undermine him before the king. But heroes always seem to start from the most unlikely places, and they overcome the most insurmountable odds to do things that up until that point, we thought were absolutely impossible. You know, there's been times in history where they thought no one can ever do this. They thought no human could ever break the sound barrier. No human could ever do a, a variety of things until somebody does it and a hero steps up. Just a couple of weeks ago, there was a gymnast who who did something that no female gymnast has ever done and they didn't even think was possible until she did it. That's what heroes do. Scripture reminds us in Philippians 4, 12 to 13, it says this, I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. And I have learned the secret of being content in every situation whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. And he's saying, I know what it means to struggle, and yet I can do all of this through him who gives me strength. That's what leaders do. They press in and they trust God, and they trust what God is calling us to do, even when we don't fully have the resources to get it done. Over and over again, 
Throughout all of history, God chooses the most unlikely people to do the most extraordinary things. I love that about God. He takes the Davids to overcome the Goliaths. He takes the Ruths to redeem a people. He, he uses so many unique characters all throughout Christ's lineage are people, the underdogs that God uses for his kingdom and for his glory. Another example of this is Gideon. Pastor Mike just preached an awesome message on, on Gideon and Gideon's willingness to follow God in insurmountable circumstances, even when it seemed crazy. In fact, the story gets kind of interesting. God purposely stacked the odds against Gideon just to prove that it wasn't Gideon's strength, but his faith and God's strength that led them to victory. I invite you to go back this week and to re-listen to Pastor Mike's message where he talks about the gap between us and ourselves and the gap between us and God and how God bridges that and calls us into something more. It's from May 23rd. And, and to be inspired again. But all of this reminds us of this moral is that heroes are called to do hard things. You see, we as Christians are not called to follow the path of least resistance. We may feel like we are the least likely hero, but we are still called to partner with God and to leave the results up to him. I'm not called to greatness and to faithfulness, but, or sorry, I'm not called to, to greatness. I'm simply called to faithfulness to God. And, and God will bring the fruitfulness. He promises that he will. But we're just called to be faithful. Look, this morning, I, I believe that, that Nehemiah is a great example of a hero. And that we should all learn from him. And, and as we look at him, we see that before all else, Nehemiah goes to God. He prays for the ability to help his people. And he prays for success in that endeavor because he believes that it's not about him. Moreover, Nehemiah is not just a leader, he's a servant leader who wants to be in the middle of things. He wants to help others and to take care of these needs in person rather than just stepping back and directing it all and letting somebody else pick up the slack. No, Nehemiah was a man of integrity and he allowed God to do great things through him. This morning isn't just about Nehemiah. I believe that God wants to raise up a generation of new heroes, of new people who step up and follow God, men and women with these same qualities, heroes who understand servant leadership, who recognize that we may come, at, 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 this may all come at great personal cost, but that we're eager to be involved in something bigger than themselves, bigger than me. I believe that God wants to call us into his kingdom to do great deeds and to do great work, but, but that it's not just about me. And that's what servant leadership is all about. Second, heroes who, God is raising up a generation of heroes who have followed God wholeheartedly and walk with integrity. I believe that God is raising up a new generation with a passion to pray, uh, for prayer and worship that will change the world, that, that will drive us into deeper communion with God. And it's not this kind of wavering back and forth and half-heartedness, but a, a generation that, that, that seeks God and moves forward with integrity. And thirdly, I believe that heroes are those who are willing to do hard things. You see, there is no lack of pain and brokenness in our world. But, but all we need to do is, is look around and see the darkness and we, and we can see the evil in our world. We can see the brokenness, we can see the dysfunction. But one of my favorite missionaries once said, the darker the night, the brighter the light. Church, brothers and sisters, friends, this is our chance to shine our light. 
It's our chance to step into the darkness and believe that God wants to use you and me to do hard things, to bind up the brokenhearted, and to be God's hands and his feet in this world. I believe God is challenging us to do more than we could ever think, ask, or imagine if we just join together with maybe a couple of other people and, and step forward and begin to be heroes in our world. Come, let us join together and aspire to something more. Something that God has placed within our heart. There's a, there's a fire in our bones that, that compels us to move forward. It is to reflect God's heart, his character, and to be his hands and feet in the world. You see, I believe that we need more heroes, not less. And we can do this thing together. And, and as much as I love talking about heroes, I recognize that there are so many times that, that when it comes to me, I often think, you know, but, but I can't do this. And maybe you're thinking the same thing this morning. We disqualify ourselves. And you're thinking, I, I'm too broken. I don't have the right gifts. God couldn't possibly use me. I don't have the resources. I don't even have a cape. How could I do it? But ironically, that's how most hero stories start. It starts with the most unlikely people, with five smooth stones who just step out. And, and the whole point of the story is, if we're not in it for the glory, that's the good thing. It's not meant to be done for glory. I mean, the person that's going around trying to do it to be a hero and do it for their own glory, this is the person with like a film crew showing off their good deeds, working at a soup kitchen. And that can only mean one thing. It's election season. So what I'm trying to say is this. Don't disqualify yourselves. No one likes to see somebody who is disingenuinely doing it just for the fame. Don't disqualify yourself. Don't, don't step back and say that I have to be perfect. None of us are perfect. We just have to take the next step. Maybe you're going to be like that little boy that stepped forward with Jesus with the five loaves and the two fishes. And God used him to do a great miracle. God can use each and every one of us like the widow with her two mites. God wants to use you to transform his kingdom. Sometimes when I'm overwhelmed, I remember the story uh, of a couple of years ago, I heard this story that forever transformed me and how I think about this kind of stuff. It's about a woman who was walking on the beach after there was a great storm and the storm had washed up thousands upon thousands of starfish and they, they were as far as the eye could see, more than you could possibly count. And this woman, as was her custom, was walking the beach as she loved to do every single day with her friend. But, but this woman was a nature lover, and she loved starfish in particular. And, and so that day, as they were walking, she would stop, and she would pick up a starfish, and she would make sure that it was still alive. And, and in its moment of desperation, she would throw it back into the ocean. And she would take a step and pick up a starfish, throw it back into the ocean. She would take a step, she would stop and pick up a starfish, and she would throw it back into the ocean. And as this went on, her friend, always the practical one, was growing a little frustrated, looking at how far they had to yet to go to get back to where they wanted to. And they were frustrated by the slowness of pace, and you could hear it in the, in the sighs when she would throw each one back and the slow looks at her watch. And finally, she said to her friend, the problem is too big. You can't possibly save them all. Why don't we just give up and walk home? The friend stopped and lovingly looked at the starfish in, in her hand and she said, you're right, I can't save them all, but it matters to this one. And she threw it back into the ocean. That is the story that I believe that God would have for each and every one of us. You may be the most unlikely of all heroes. You may have the odds stacked against you. And the problem may be too vast and too big. And you may look at our world and say, it is too broken. Or maybe this child is hurting too much. I can't save them all. 
But it's not about changing everything and doing it all. But it's just about it mattering to that one. Let me challenge you with this by saying, never let what you cannot do stop you from doing what you can do. As we close this morning, I want to leave us with two challenges from my heart for each and every one of us. And that's first. First is because it's Father's Day. I, I challenge us to find men in our lives. Maybe it's a father or maybe it's a grandfather and pull them up aside today and just take some time to listen to them and to simply say, thank you. Thank you for being in my life. Thank you for being present. Thank you for modeling the good things that you see in them. Maybe it's a spouse, a brother, or a friend, and you want to pull them aside and you just want to tell them what you admire in them, the good traits that you see in them. Or maybe it's a child, or a son, or a student at your school, and, or a friend that you just want to, a little one, and you want to call forth that inner hero inside of each one of them and, and say, and begin to call out what God has placed in them. And so if there are men in your life this week, I pray that you would encourage them today. That's something practical that we could all do. And then second, second is we all are called to be heroes. And so let's go. Let's all receive the mantle of Nehemiah. Let us be servant leaders who lead with integrity and do hard things. Let's press in and let's not make it about us, but let's wholeheartedly say, God, would you use me today? This week, would you set aside some time to say, how can I be a hero for someone? Maybe it's to set aside $10 and, and just bless someone this week. But whatever it is, look for an opportunity to write a note to encourage someone, to spend some quality time with someone, or to give a gift to someone. Maybe it's a homeless person or whatever it is. You just want to be a blessing to them, to extravagantly be a blessing, to be a hero for someone else. Helping one person may not change the world, but this week, you could change the world for one person. Let's pray as we close this morning. And if, if you're willing, I invite you to open your hands and, and just as a way of saying, I wholeheartedly surrender my life to Jesus. I wholeheartedly place it in his, his hands. Let us together be heroes. Let's pray. Father God, we give you our lives. We give you all that we are all of our insecurities, all of our brokenness, all of the things in which we say, I, I can't do it. In fact, I need someone to come and rescue me. Lord, I pray that you would show yourself faithful in our lives this week. And Lord, as we step out, would we find ways to be a blessing to someone else? Would we be heroes this week in a real, tangible, and practical way? Would we rise up with another generation of Nehemiahs and Queen Esthers who step forward with boldness to do daring great things? But will we do it with integrity and will we do it out of a heart of love for you? In Jesus' name we pray. As we close this week, may you go forth into your week and may you be a hero and may you be inspired to be God's hands and his feet for this broken world. Have a great and wonderful day. May you all be blessed today as you go. I love you all and I appreciate you. And may you not forget to either tell a dad joke or at least laugh. <laughs>